We totally get the classic vibes of the set just looking at the box. The yellow framing as LEGO boxes used to have a few decades ago, the stripe with the set's name, age marking done in the exact same font, and the overall simple looking and made background on the set's main images. There's a few more info on the side of the box, and the flapping side goes a bit further explaining about the different factions of minifigures of the set. Which, by the way, there are a ton of. 21 in total. I don't want this review to be longer than it needs to be, so very quickly we have 4 civilian minifigures. There's also a wizard, which feels a bit lackluster without any print whatsoever. There's 3 forest guardians to build up your army if you also got the gift with purchase set forest hideout a few months ago, and 3 black falcons. There's a bit more going on here, with this guy having to carry a heavy load on his back and a knight here riding his horse. The horse barding is an exclusive element to the set, and the horse itself, while not exclusive to the set, isn't that widely common. Finally, there's 10 lion knights. 10! Feels a bit overkill in my opinion, but they do have a big castle to defend, I guess. I like these three that are heavily armed, especially the queen. She has a different leg element from the rest, her cape looks definitely special with the Lion Knight's logo, and there's an alternate air piece with a crown as well. The horse also wears an exclusive barding, and if you're not familiar with the new horses, they're more articulate than they were a few decades ago. Not exactly a minifigure, but there's a cow with a cart, which was made with flag elements at an angle that I found really clever. All of the big animals have extra pieces to be complete without stuff attached on top of them, and there's this cute little guy as well. The castle itself is seriously impressive. It's mostly grey as you would expect and looks somewhat plain when it's standing by itself, but once you start populating it with some minifigures it kinda comes to life. From the front there's different levels of layers to the whole build, with the lower ones being green for the most part with a few flowers and an exclusive to this set dark green spruce tree element. There's also a water section in front of the gate, on top of which there's the access ramp to the castle. Turning this crank up here will lower the bridge for people to get inside unless they're altered by the dropping portcullis and be made disappear to unknown whereabouts by deploying the bridge mechanism. More on that later on. The mostly grey build is made less worrying with an abundance of profile bricks to give it the, well, bricky look. And there's lots of these thin dark grey windows spread across the entire build, which were actually a simple yet cool building technique. There's some foliage here and there, and back to the front, the different layers of arches for the main entrance are nice looking, topped by two Lion Knight's shields and a window up there, recessed a little bit in the wall for great effect. Under the battlements at the top, there's also this thin line of dark grey, supported by these rounded one by one tiles that can be seen below every major tower-like structure of the castle. Speaking of towers, most have flags on them with the highlights going for the big one with a cloth-like element with the big Lion Knight's logo, a brick built one back here and another one made with the same cloth type material. Below a different style of window and next to it what appears to be living quarters with the tether style walls. I also quite like how the thatched roof was made with the combination of these claw-like elements and dark tan slopes. Looking above the walls we get to see some of the interior space of the build. This entryway here with the foliage and blue flowers looks really nice, there's a small stand with some food, there's a few different stairs leading to different areas of the fortress, with this one here connecting to the left side of the castle. There's a door that leads to the interior of that living quarters area, some battlements and stairs to lead up here, but my favorite thing has to be the water wheel down here. It can be spun, but for what purpose? More on that later on. Worth noting there's this little dock that leads to a seemingly closed off access, and there's another window section here with this little gap. Right below it on the ground level there's a brown frog, so... Mm. Finally to the right side of the castle, a large tree that grew alongside the outer wall, similar style to the one from the gift with purchase set I mentioned earlier, with a little splash of color in the form of the bee nest. As you've noticed there's a lot going on inside the model, and to access it the back of the castle can be opened like so, revealing a lot more of what the model has to offer. Remember the black knight that disappeared earlier in the video? Here she is right by the catacombs of the castle ready to be placed in prison. One of the cells is already occupied though, for maybe a bit too long of a time. 
Moving up there's the area right behind the castle bridge and portcullis with a stable big enough to feed the queen's horse. This archway is the one that leads into the interior area I shown before and there's a ladder that leads up to the armory of the castle where a bunch of equipment can be stored. These two stands can actually be taken out for easier access and that ends up revealing the chains that make the bridge work and the one in the middle being the one that drops the portcullis. The mechanism is incredibly simple, you just need to twist the Technic gear to hold the portcullis in position and touching this bar here will release it. I love the play features of this set, not gonna lie, they add so much to the whole experience and we haven't even touched on half of them, believe me. To the left a chest with some coins inside, another stand to store a few more pieces of equipment and up here some stones that can be dropped in these holes to defend the back entrance of the castle. Remember me saying it was closed off? Well, it obviously can be opened by turning this round brick here. Down there there's a spot with a hole. It feels like a minifigure can sit in here and... Oh! Here we have the castle's kitchen it seems with pieces of food, jars and a wood oven to cook. In the upper level a room with a fireplace and an harpsichord and in the level above the interior of the living quarters we've seen before from the outside where a cool little nod to the classic yellow castle lego set is shown. Apparently there was Lego to play with back in the Lego castle timeframe. To the other side a bedroom, very compact but with all the essentials you would expect at this time and age. A bed, desk and a fireplace for the cold nights, maybe this is the queen's bedroom. Below the dining hall with a table set for two and a few shields stuck on the wall for the shield collecting fans. On the ground level we finally get to see what the water wheel was all about. This is actually a functioning water mill where all those hay bales the cow has on the cart will be turned into flour to then become bread. As impressive as that might look, for me the highlight of the whole set has to be this gimmick over here. When you open this whole section the balcony turns into a battlement and it does so while this section in here slides in and out of the wall itself with an amazing selection of parts. In doing so a secret compartment behind this ladder element is revealed which holds a golden frog inside. Not sure what the exact meaning is but lego designers do love the frog element for some weird reason. Me personally I just love how all of this works regardless of how silly the result is. Is the set over though? Not really, there's still a lot of secrets hidden within. The castle is built out of two main sections that when taken apart reveal a hidden room. Probably the Black Falcon's location to plot against the Queen. This place is accessible through a hidden trapdoor under the spot where the food stand on the courtyard is. Very sneaky. It can also be accessed through a cave tunnel that leads into the water area by the ramp and bridge access of the castle. Pretty neat, right? But wait, there's more! By the big black tree outside, you know, the one similar to the one from the forest hideout set, the forestmen have set up yet another hideout, easily identifiable by their shield, and not only that, when the cave is open, this wall can slide to the side, revealing that one of these cells in the catacombs isn't as effective as one might think. Just wow. Growing up I wasn't much of a castle fan, even now I couldn't care less about the theme. What I personally do care about is a good building experience with neat features and mechanisms that make me want to actually play with the models I've just built. And the Lion Knight's castle is that kind of a model for me and so much more. Now imagine if on top of all of that I was a castle fan like I'm sure many of you out there are. This model is a perfect alignment of all of the best things LEGO has to offer to LEGO fans, especially castle fans. A proper castle lego set like no other has been done by lego before, an amazing selection of minifigures that for army building purposes is a must, no stickers, amazing build, great mechanisms and play and even though the set being priced at $400 is expensive, considering everything I just said and a price per piece ratio decent enough on a model with over 4500 pieces makes this one of the best lego sets done this year. Subscribe for more frog poop jokes and I'll see you all in the next video.